We're joined by Ian Blackford. He's Westminster leader of the Scottish National Party. Mr Blackford, as always, thank you so much for coming on Bloomberg Surveillance. Pleasure. First, thank you. Yeah. Um, does the vote actually have a chance of getting through this, uh, to, this evening? And d does that depend on what the DUP say and does it depend on what yeah. the Attorney General say? I think it was quite interesting to hear from your correspondent in Brussels because fundamentally this is actually really all about the Tory party and by extension the DUP as well. And this has been, I think, the issue for Theresa May. She's never sought to try and reach an accommodation across the House of Commons. It's about trying to hold her fractured party together. And I guess everything we've known over the course of the last few weeks is about being given a ladder that the DUP and the ERG on the right wing of the right. Tory party can climb down. Everything I've seen... So what does that mean? Your prediction is what? That this well, vote doesn't go through and then well, we simply, what, we, an we, sim we simply don't know at the moment. But certainly all the legal opinion I have seen suggests that this actually doesn't really change anything as far as the backstop is concerned. And actually I'm pleased about that because the backstop is there mm -hmm. because of a peace treaty in Ireland. It's about making sure that we can avoid a hard border. And it's really important that the right. EU has stayed together on this, and they have done. But look... So I, I actually read the text, OK? Uh, yeah. And I was briefed by, by people that, that helped draft it. And actually, my understanding of it is that the UK were always concerned that if the EU were playing hardball, then they had no way out of Brexit. It, with this text, it would mean that if the EU was playing games, they, they could revoke it. No, because it doesn't change the withdrawal agreement, and the withdrawal agreement still means that the UK doesn't have the unilateral right to, Unless to one leave part the backstop. Is unreasonable. Yeah, but then you have to go to arbitration, but that's still going to be based on the European Court of Justice. So if you're a kind of extreme right wing Brexiteer, it actually doesn't really change anything. But look, at the end of the day, I don't think it's going to be about that, because I think this is a fig leaf, but it's about whether or not the DUP and the ERG believe they've got a ladder they can climb down. That might be the case, it might not, we'll have to wait and see. I hope the House of Commons today does reject this, I hope we'd reject no deal tomorrow, and I hope we extend Article 50, and I'll tell you why. Because at the end of the day, it has to be about our communities, it has to be about jobs. There is no such thing as a good Brexit. The best deal we have on the table is actually staying in. The best deal is staying in the single market and the customs union. We know what's already happened, we've heard from so many car manufacturers, we've lost the jobs from the European Medicines Agency, they went last week thousand jobs that's gone from London. This is not good news. Really, when you look at the, uh, the, all the economists, the expectations are that on this deal that we're looking at round about a 4% reduction in GDP, twice the impact of the financial crisis. This is not good news, and parliamentarians have got a responsibility right. to protect the jobs of their constituents. They should mm -hmm. reject this today. We should be staying in. Ian Blackford, good morning from uh, New York. Ian Duncan Smith said on this show a while back, an arch lever, that he's looking for a reformation in the economy of the United Kingdom. I'm sure you disagree with that. Is what we're really talking about here, after all this debris, are we really talking about Scottish independence? But look, at the end of the day, we're determined that Scotland is not dragged out of the European Union against its will. There was a very heavy Remain vote in Scotland. And, you know, Tom, I would say to you, I mean, I've had the opportunity when I worked in the city to live and work in Amsterdam. My son uh, worked in the Netherlands as well. And we're taking away, away these automatic rights from people, and we're not prepared to sit back and allow that to happen. So we have an amendment today, and I'm calling on the government in London to recognise mm -hmm. the right of the people of Scotland to choose their own future. And if our First Minister determines that we will use the mandate that we already have, then Westminster should respect that. We see ourselves as European, and we're simply not prepared to sit back and see our rights taken away from us. Will you support a vote of no confidence in the government if Theresa May loses the deal tonight? Yes, we would. I mean, we don't have confidence in this government. We've got a Prime Minister that has failed to give leadership at a time of crisis, and this is a crisis. So we need to see a couple of things happen. If there's an election, we would welcome that, but we would also welcome a people's vote. We need to recognise that it is about jobs. As uh, Bill Clinton once famously said, it's about the economy, stupid. And we really need to make sure that we protect the interests of our people. Ian Blackford, thank you so much for joining us. He's, of course, a Westminster leader of the Scottish National Party.